Hello, Empowered Woman. Welcome to this episode of the Empowered Woman Podcast. Before I get to today's guest, I want to remind you about my new and free masterclass, Five Steps to Become a Sought-After Speaker and Personality. I recorded it live earlier this week and over 70 ladies registered. The feedback was so good. I had an amazing time teaching on this and really being vulnerable about my journey into more visibility and exposure over the last six years. Be sure to register and watch the recording at your convenience. And now on to today's guest. I talked with Danielle Weeb. She's a community builder, collaboration expert, business strategist, and the founder of Business Babes Collective, a global community for female entrepreneurs. She shared her fascinating business journey, having had 10 years experience in several different industries and all the wisdom that's come with it. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Empowered Woman Podcast, the number one show on personal growth, visibility, and profit for women entrepreneurs. If you're wanting to start believing in yourself, giving yourself permission to succeed, and let your voice be heard to make an impact in the world as an entrepreneur, this is the place for you. I am so glad that you're here. My name is Marta Spurk, and I'm your host, triplet mom, woman empowerment coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. Welcome again, and let's dive into today's episode. Hi, Danielle. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me, Mara. I'm so excited to be on the podcast. Yeah, I'm excited for us to chat as well. So I connected with Danielle through Stephanie Gass, who I've had here on the show a couple of times. Um, You've actually worked with Steph, which is amazing. So you're on the same thought process of not working yourself ragged, um, especially as a mom, (laughs) right? And building your business from a place of uh, self-trust, right? And Mm -hmm. knowing what exactly needs to be done, not just doing random things and seeing what what works and what doesn't. So I'm so excited for us to dive in. Before we dive in, though, I always like to remind our listeners uh, to start taking some notes, mental notes, written written notes, and then sharing it with us because it's so helpful as podcasters, because Danielle is a podcaster as well. Um, to hear the feedback and to know what was, you know, helpful, uh, what was like a breakthrough for somebody out there, a light bulb moment, and then tag us on social media because you know how to find me, but you'll also know how to find Danielle through the show notes. So without further ado, I would love for us to tell us more who you are and what you do. Yeah. Thank you so much. So yeah, my name is Danielle Weeb. I am the founder of Business Babes Collective, which is a community of female entrepreneurs. And it my journey kind of started with me really trying a lot of different areas of entrepreneurship. And so, um, right in, while I was going to school, I went to school for business. And so I always knew I wanted to own my own business, but I didn't really know what that looked like. So I started freelancing in university, working for other people, doing marketing and social media and blogging and everything like that. Um, and then from there, I actually worked for my sister's business. She was a wedding planner for, for a time. I worked for my mom's business. And so during that time, I was kind of trying to like network and meet other people. And uh, in my local city, which is Vancouver, Canada, um, there wasn't much for people like me. I always kind of felt a little bit left out of the loop because I felt like I would go to these events and, you know, I was just coming out of school. I was, I was really passionate about learning about business and how, you know, social media and media, you know, all intertwined with business. And, um, I would go there and all the business owners were like 15, 20 years into business and most of them were men. So I felt like really, I didn't belong there. And so I would meet people along the way, you know, during these events and other women, other people that I felt like were in my similar situation. And so I would connect with them and we would go for coffee and just kind of meet one another And so I had this idea of just hosting this pop-up event for people like me. (laughs) So I did that. I invited all of these other people that I had met and uh, we hosted our first event. I think we had like 10 people or something like that. And then, and then everyone was asking, well, when's the next one? It's like, Mm -hmm. I I don't know. So then I hosted another one and it honestly just grew from there. Like it really snowballed into this monthly thing that I would just host these events and I would bring in sponsors and speakers and it just sort of grew pretty organically. 
And so, um, we did that for about, I guess it was, yeah, f- about four and a half years. And of course, then with 2020, mm-hmm. um, we had to shut everything down. We lost 80% of our income overnight. Oh. And so we had to, you know, rethink our business and like, what are we going to do? How are we going to sustain this community? How are we, how are we going to help the people that, you know, are a part of our community and still want to connect and still need resources, but also support the business and, yeah. and keep the business going. Mm. And so that's when, you know, we started hosting on online events and, um, in this fall of 2020 w- w- was when I launched the podcast, um, and really got into kind of online business, launched a course, um, started a mastermind group. And so since then, it's really been focusing on the online side of my business, which has been really great because we also got pregnant in 2020. So, so then had our our daughter, um, and we've just started to bring back events, but it's instead of it being like this, it used to be this, like every single month hosting events. And it was just so overwhelming and really like, I I, I'm not going to lie. Like I was in this like hustle mentality of just, month to month. Um, you know, I I would work evenings and weekends, all of that. And so this has really been a huge transition for me to really, um, focus in on the things that matter. Kind of like what we talked about at the beginning, like not just doing everything and anything and being on all the different platforms, but really figuring out what works and what is the most important thing for me to focus on. And, um, for me, it's always been connections, you know, it's always been relationships and connections and, um, podcasting is just something that I really, really love. And I love to, uh, meet other people through that as well. And so, yeah, I felt like, I feel like now we've really been able to, f- to figure out our niche, yeah. um, and bringing other women together, are part of the community as well. Mm, oh my gosh. I love the trajectory. I always like to say, um, and I've repeated myself so many times here <laughs> over the years on the show, but it's so refreshing to hear people talk about the different things that they've tried. And I remember when I interviewed mm-hmm. staff for the latest episode is what she said, oh, I've done lots of different things. Yes. I tried this and then I tried that. And then I released a journal and then I did this. And it's like more people need to open up by saying this, you know, I've tried this, it worked for a little bit and then it stopped working or I tried this, it didn't work at all. And then I yes. went to something else because it's helpful to be like, this is how it is, friends. This is the right. truth of trial and error uh, and getting to know your audience, getting to know what works for you and your routine and then adjusting around worldwide events like the pandemic. Yes. And I love that you reached out to your local audience. And it's interesting because I was doing something similar. I had just started. I wasn't like full blown because I, I, I imagine that would have been even scarier for you uh, because you'd been doing it for years and then being like, I literally can't do this anymore. I had just mm-hmm. started three months prior what in my idea was monthly events too and I totally resonate with you like by the time one event was done you're already planning the next one if it's a monthly thing oh yeah so you're never you never stop there is never a break so in a way I was glad for the yeah like this is the great excuse for me to not do this monthly (laughs) well and you know what I think like it's it it took that to really um, because I think there was a few times, cause I, I, I would think in my head, you know, this is not sustainable. And I knew that. And my husband and I had talked about it and, you know, he was saying like, you know, you need to like figure out something else because y- you can't sustain this pace. And if we want to start a family, you're yeah. not going to be able to sustain this pace with, you know, having, having a baby, like yeah. that's just not realistic. Mm-hmm. And I knew that, like I knew it, mm-hmm. but it was like, I was just in this cycle of like, but this is what I do. And this is how I, and I was just so scared to like press pause to really figure out what was next for me. And, um, actually I really, um, I always had, I always had that I would love to start a podcast one day because at my events, I would interview other women yeah. and, you know, connection and, and conversation is always so important to me. But, and so I wanted to actually launch it in January of 2020. And so I was kind of gearing up to do that. And then of course, when the pandemic hit, I was just in like survival mode. Um, And so it actually took me until December of that year, um, almost a year later to actually start. But um, yeah, it took that, that forced stop Mm -hmm. to really allow me to figure out what was next. And like, I mean, I, I, I didn't even, you know, share because I, I tried to condense my story as much as possible. Um, but, you know, we had actually launched into other cities as well. So oh, wow. we had other chapters 
Um, so not only was I hosting events in my city, but there was other chapters that I was, I was trying to help manage and I would, you know, go to their events when I could. And, um, so it was just, it was a lot. And so when that all kind of stopped abruptly, it really, you know, made me figure out, okay, what is next? And that was a really, really hard time. Like, I don't want to just pass by that and say like, oh yeah, I just, you know, took some time and I, you know, figured out what was next. Like that was one of the lowest moments. I remember the fall of 2020, we had actually just done a virtual conference. We had gotten all the chapter leaders together. We're like, okay, let's do a virtual conference um, with all the different chapters all together. And it was a, it was a success, Mm -hmm. but it was so much work. We ended up because I just end up going all in on things. So we ended up doing these VIP boxes. We were shipping product all over the like US and Canada. And it was just like, oh my goodness. So then after that happened, I went into this like huge burnout season of just like, I can't even do anything right now. Like I am exhausted. I, you know, we went from doing one event per month, opening up all these chapters to then trying to sustain this online business, figuring out what we're doing. And then, so that season was really, really, really hard for me. And, um, yeah. And then the month after that we got pregnant Mm -hmm. and I was feeling extremely nauseous and not feeling well. And I just remember like just not feeling myself and also not knowing what was next. That was a really, really scary time. Um, so that was the season where it was like, okay, what is next for me? What is like, what am I doing? Um, like somebody help me. Um, no, but I think that was like, yeah, God's kind of nudge of like, okay, this is next for you. Um, I actually started listening to Stephanie Gass's podcast again. I was like, Kate podcast is the thing, like, let's go for this. And that's kind of the trajectory we've been on, um, since then. Mm. And I love what you said in the beginning that you and your husband both knew and agreed, this is not sustainable. And I think, So many times throughout our business, it's like we avoid this reality that there's a point where you can't do things the way you used to do. And we get so frustrated. We're like mourning that for such a long time. It takes us a while to accept the fact and then start making plans. And this has a lot to do with so many other things in life. And let's just add in motherhood, like Mm -hmm. our kids grow. And I'm sure you've been experiencing this as as your your, uh, kid grows too, is that what used to work for that year, they're growing. So it's not going to work anymore. And it's like, oh no, yeah. we're taking away a nap. I want to have, I want them to have naps for the rest of their life. Like go to, <laughs> until they go to college, please take a nap. And, and there <laughs> comes a time when that's not going to happen. And you're going to have to yes. adjust your routine. And our businesses are the same way. There comes a time, whether it be a new update on social media or, mm-hmm. you know, a new fee that you have to pay or a new, a change in taxes, whatever may have you, or you just decided you don't like that niche anymore, but you're still right. holding on to that because it's what you know and it's just so hard to let that go and I'm sure there are some ladies out there that are they may be going through that they understand that this is not for them anymore I was just seeing a post actually um, earlier this morning about one of my clients that's been an entrepreneur for several years but she's embarking on a journey of getting a job now and she says I'm I'm, I'm putting a stop just for right now I don't know what the future is going to bring and I'm just really proud of the people that embrace yeah. things in life and I'm seeing this more and more of people being like you know very successful entrepreneurs and saying this is where my path is taking me now and there's no shame because yes. oftentimes we feel afraid and that's where I think the pandemic kind of helped because it's like it's not that I failed or I decided the pandemic did it for me so it's kind of a little bit easier because <laughs> it was forced you know and at times yes. it takes it being forced as opposed to us just being like, this is it. I don't care if people are going to judge me, which most likely no one's going to. It's just our own perception of it. Yeah. Uh, but I would love to hear your take on this. Like, yes. what should we do? Like, how do you take that step? And then I also want to talk about how you support women into not get it, having yeah. to get to the burnout point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I think the big thing is like, so, and I want to mention too, during that season, not only was I feeling like, oh my goodness, what's next? But I felt like I had, and, and, you know, I, my faith is really important to me and I have always known, like, don't put your identity into your work. Like that is always something that I've really tried not to do, but I realized that I was holding on to this identity of myself as I'm the events person. I'm the person who puts on these amazing events for entrepreneurs. And that's how my community saw me. That's what people would say about me. And so 
I didn't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like, what value do I have to bring to my community now? Like, I don't have any value. I don't know what, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do anymore. And so just realizing that, like, first of all, you are so much more than your business. Like, there's so much more value that you have than just a business owner. Um, But also, like, you also have other skills just because you've been doing one thing and you've been really, really good at that one thing for so long, that doesn't mean that you can't do something else or that you can't translate some of those skills that you have into other things. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was figuring out, okay, I have this skill of hosting these events and bringing people together. I can use this skill in podcasting. I can use this skill for connections and working with other, other people and collaborations and that is like what I'm so passionate about now is how do we work together? How do we collaborate? How do we connect with one another and partner together so that we can benefit one another in business? And so it's just realizing like, okay, you might have been going down this path and you might think this is the only thing that you can do, but I promise you there's something else there that you can do. And if you would like to pivot and do something else also, you know, you're never going to be good at something if you don't practice it. Right. So, you know, when it comes to doing something new, whether it be speaking, I know like you're, you've done public speaking before, like I'm sure your first public speaking opportunity wasn't like the best, Mm -hmm. you know, the best you've ever done, but you know, you get better and you hone your skills and all of those things, just like anything you want to do, whether it be a new business opportunity or, um, yeah, a podcast, or maybe you want to go on YouTube, who knows, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, really figure out what is it that, what are your skills? What are things? And then what are things that you can practice and get better at? And sometimes even if it's not a skill right now, but you're really passionate about it or you're curious about it, that can become a skill later on. Yeah. So anyways, I just wanted to share that because I know like for me, that was a huge like identity crisis, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word. Well, And that is so powerful (laughs) because that's what it is. We attach our worth to yes. that identity. And we don't realize that it could change into something else. And also because most often we don't want to be a beginner because it's like, I've mm-hmm. built this up. Now I have to start something new, which means I'm not going to be the greatest right in the beginning. That sucks. I want to be the best. And exactly. it, it also reminds me of my kids now because as they're growing, some, well, one of them is particularly more competitive than the others. And it's like, he hates not knowing things right away. And I right. completely commiserate. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, I know what that's like. I know what it's like, but now, you know, being 30 some years old, I'm looking at the six-year-old and I'm saying, friend, there will be so many things throughout your life Mm. you're going to suck at right away. And you don't have to, you know, dive into them if it's not something you like, but if it is, you're going to have to practice. And that's just the way that it is. So I love that you brought all of that up because it's, we know this, we know all of this, you know, as grownups, as people Mm -hmm. that have had so much life experience, but we tend to forget and we need to be reminded just like six-year-olds that it's okay yes. to make mistakes. It's okay uh, to not know everything and to be a beginner. And that's the beauty of life is that we have this amount of time here on this earth to learn all these things, to fall, but then pick ourselves back up and then say, this is what I did. And then sh- tell our kids, right? Yeah, <laughs> them, exactly. Through all of this and if, if it's made me stronger. So yeah, I love that. So now tell us a yeah. little bit more about how you help women going from burnout to then scaling your business without having to work around the clock. Is it really possible? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I think the biggest thing that I was worried about when we stopped doing events was like, okay, I I know I can do something else, but am I able to be successful at it? Am I able to actually make this sustainable? And so I think the biggest thing to figure out first is what are some things that you're doing that maybe either you don't need to be doing at at all. (laughs) There might be some things that you are doing that, um, you could continue doing. However, how can you create it so that it's more of a system so that you don't have to start from scratch every single time? So maybe that's like creating templates for things, or maybe it is, um, pre writing emails so that, you know, um, whenever you get an email inquiry, you have that there, um, a system for your schedule. So, uh, you know, I know that you like using, I, I can't remember, do you use Calendly or, or something Calendly. else scheduling oh, yeah. software? Yeah. So I use, I use that too. So, you know, how can you kind of automate your schedule? Mm-hmm. All of those things. There's a lot of things where I was doing things very like, 
um, like it didn't really have a system for anything. It was just, okay, my emails would come in. (laughs) Exactly. Right. So my emails would come in. I would, you know, respond to all my emails. If I had to schedule an appointment, it would be going back and forth with the person, you know, 20 times before we find a time that works for both of us. And so there are so many tools, especially today where you can use those tools to be able to create systems and automations in your business. And I'm not saying every single aspect of yeah. your business had, it has to be automated, mm-hmm. but how can you get yourself back some of that time? And for me, I had to do this because I was, I knew that when I had my girl, I was going to have to go from, you know, I was working about like 40 to 50, sometimes more hours a week to working, you know, at the beginning, like five hours a week and then move up to 10, 15, whatever. Right. And so it was like, Hey, what can I take off my plate? Mm -hmm. Um, is there something that I can potentially outsource even if it's part-time, right? Um, so really figuring out what are you doing there? And then from there, it's like, if you're doing like an actual pivot of something else, um, who's done it? Like who, who else can you look to that has done what you want to do? What did they do? How are they doing it? Um, Another thing to think about too, is what kind of lifestyle that do you want to live and what kind of life do you want to live? Not just like, okay, I want to run this business, but like, that's great. Cause I love events. I absolutely love hosting events. It's such a passion of mine, but I had to realize that the type of lifestyle I want Mm. doesn't allow for me to do an event every month. That doesn't mean I can never do events. It just means, you know, maybe I'm doing two a year instead of 12 a year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so I think it's just really figuring out like, what kind of lifestyle do you want? Do you want to yeah. have that flexibility? Do you want that freedom? And then what can you do that's more flexible? So for me right now, that looks like having a course, um, a mastermind and coaching mm-hmm. that doesn't have to be that for you. You could choose one of those things. You could choose something completely, completely different. If you have like a service base, I don't know if most people in your community are service based, but, um, whatever products, um, selling products, whatever that looks like, but like, what, what can you do? That's going to allow you to have the lifestyle that you want. Mm -hmm. And then how can you build those systems around yourself to support you to have that? That doesn't mean you have to have a massive team. I don't have a massive team. Um, I have a few people, I have some contractors that I contract out. I have someone who works for me part-time and that's what works for me. And I love it. You know, I I love being able to have that support, but not having to run this massive team. So really figuring out what aligns with your own values. Yeah, that is so important. And and also when you were talking about, you know, once I got pregnant and then once I had the baby, I think every entrepreneur needs to think about this. Not that you're necessarily going to have a baby, but one of the things that when I was working with an OBM, she said, is this something that if you had specific steps, your husband could come in and do it for you. Yes. If we need to have these things in mind, what if tomorrow... I can't send this email. Is there exactly. some kind of step-by-step or SOP that I can hire somebody or have a family member easily go through? Because then you can't hand it over to anyone. This is not a sustainable business. We're talking about sustainability, right? Yes. Before. yes. It's the same. And it doesn't have to be that by tomorrow you have all of the steps written down because that's overwhelm. You're not going to do it. And then you're just going to crash. right? Yeah. It's start little by little so that you can then delegate so that you can have somebody on your team. And I think all the questions that you encouraged, you know, people to ask themselves is, do you want to be working the amount of hours that you're working right now? Because mm-hmm. oftentimes, again, it's the identity, right? As, uh, associated yeah. with your work and your worth. Uh, yes. As long as I'm working, then I'm good. But sometimes it's not even giving you the results that you're working towards. Yes. Uh, it's such a nightmare in our heads if, that we need to snap out and we need mentors like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Right? laughs> and I have to say too, I was very overwhelmed by all of this at the beginning as well. And I was like, I know that all this was possible, like automation and systems. And I'm like, but uh, I don't even know what those are. I don't even know what yeah, to do with that. To <laughs> no, exactly. And it, and you're right. It's, it takes step by step. It's one by one and you build upon your own systems and automations and it can start so simple. You start with one thing, you implement that, then you start with the next. So don't let it overwhelm you, um, one by one. And I promise you it's, it's easier and more simple than it sounds. So yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. anything. So let's remind, remember our kids, right? When it's like, go swimming. They're like, no, I can't, you know? Yeah. So little by little, it's the same thing. We have to treat ourselves. I always say we need to parent 
ourselves, <laughs> yes, our little children. As well. Exactly, exactly. Uh, well, and yeah. I know you have a free resource to help women with this, and I'd also love for you to talk about your offers in case women are like, "Nope, I, I'm, I'm ready." Danielle, <laughs> how can they work <laughs> with you too? And then we'll move on to our rapid fire questions. Awesome. Um, yeah. So my free resource is on my website. It's businessbabescollective.com slash masterclass. Um, and there you can learn more about my story and more about the kind of the systems that I put into place and the method that I use for that. Um, and then, yeah, we have a course that's called Action Takers Club. So it's a course in community. Uh, and it really helps you to create those systems and create those processes um, and then build upon that. And um I also love to work one-on-one one -on -one with people specifically on collaborations. I know we didn't get to talk about that too much today, but um, collaborating with other women to really figure out like, um, how can we work together? How can we um, create a collaboration that mutually benefits the both of us? Um, and so that is really what I love working with people on. And then our mastermind, which is kind of a little bit higher level. So people that are a little bit further along in their business that want that more intimate community. So I love yeah. so many different options. Yeah. So go on and get in touch with Danielle. We'll talk about how to find her in a little bit. Are you ready for a rapid fire? I'm excited to yes. come up yes. with. All right. So the first <laughs> one is notice yourself. What comes to mind? Notice yourself. Okay. Um, first thing that came to mind was uh, notice your own skills and um, the value that you have to bring to this world. I think we can often compare ourselves yeah. or think someone else is, you know, more of uh, this or that than, oh, there, sorry, my mic went up, um, more this or that than someone else. Um, I don't know if you can hear my daughter in the background, but they just came back. <laughs> yeah. No, that's wonderful. And it goes back to what you were saying too, because at times, again, we associate ourselves with one side of who we are, or we put yes. more weight or worth. And it's like, no, you're a multifaceted friend. You have all these amazing things going on for you. I love exactly. that. Exactly. Yes. Now, the next one is listen to yourself. Yes. So listen to your own when you know that something needs to either come to an end or when something needs to start. That's the first thing that came to my oh, mind. Yeah. It goes hand in hand with what we just said. Yeah, listen, <laughs> it, you're going to have that nudge. So don't ignore it. It's there yes. for a reason. Next one is forgive yourself. Oh, man, forgive yourself for um, the mistakes that you've made. We all make mistakes. Yep. Um, there's no shame in starting over or starting from scratch. Um, I've done it several times. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what I think yeah, That's good. Next is empower yourself. Mm. Yeah. You kind of have to be your own cheerleader yes. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, and really recognize like, you know, each day when you get up and you, you're going to tackle your to-do list, like you are your own cheerleader. Yes. Right. Um, and so becoming your own, like, yeah, little hype squad. <laughs> yes, you have to. You're you're with yourself all the time, so might as well exactly. be kind to yourself, right? And last yeah. but not least, transform yourself. Oh, okay. Transform yourself. I think it's like every day we have the opportunity to become a new person. Mm -hmm. um, I think we get really stuck in our own routines and habits. Um, and so just know that like every day when you wake up in the morning, you can be someone different. You can yeah. um, have a better attitude or, or yeah. um, be more positive. So that's what yeah. I would say. Every day is a new chance, right? What, what are yeah. the choices that you're going to make in this new yes. day? Yes. Awesome. Well, tell us how to find you. This is Yes. So um, so, um, I have a podcast. It's just called Business Babes Collective. Um, so I'd love for you to tune in there. Uh, and then you can find us on our website at businessbabescollective.com. And then on Instagram, my personal one is Danny with an I, Danny Living Life. That's my personal Instagram. My business Instagram is Business Babes Co. Mm -hmm. That's where you can fun. find me. That's easy. It's all yeah. under the same name. So we'll have all the links in the show notes. Thank you so much. This was such a fun conversation. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marta. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Be sure to connect with Danielle. All the links are in the show notes. And once again, I want to remind you to go catch the recording of my masterclass, my free masterclass, Five Steps to Become a Sought After Speaker and Personality. The link is also in the show notes and I would love to hear your feedback. Until next time, bye.